excited as we get ready for race 24 of the championship. And for the seventh time this season, Will Davison will start from the pole position. Let's have a word with our pole sitter. Congratulations on another pole here today, Will. You broke the qualifying record as well. Uh, First pole here, though, since 2013. Just tell us the strengths of the car around this Sandown circuit. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, big improvement from from last year for us, which is which is fantastic. You know, we really uh, had a good long hard think about our prep for this weekend. So no, the car's just much nicer to drive than last time we we're here. Can sort of attack the entries and the curbs uh, quite well, and balance is quite good. You know, but we've been obviously short sharp sessions, really focusing on trying to go fast. We haven't done too much long running yet, which is obviously when it counts. So um, balance is nicer. It's been good ever since we rolled it on the track. Now we've had our eyes to the sky so far today, just trying to get a read on what the weather might do. How are you feeling about changeable conditions that might come this afternoon? Yeah, it's one thing I can't control. I, I promise you that. I've tried over the years, but uh, no, either way, you're not comfortable, like in the wet, uh, you know, greasy conditions. You know, it's obviously tricky for everyone, but uh, hey, it's a good challenge. So if it rains, uh, bring it on. What's critical in the start here this afternoon to get through one? Uh, yeah, just got to launch well. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, just try and nail that launch and uh, that'll really dictate what, what game's going after that. Well, congratulations too on re-signing with the team. All the best this afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. All right, let's jump now into the Hino Hub with Neil Crompton. Jess, looking forward to getting stuck into some car racing, bouncing on the toes here at the moment to warm up. It's all going to liven up very shortly. Let's look at the details in the Hino Hub and understand what we're dealing with. We're back in full-blown sprint racing mode. We've got 36 laps today. We've got another couple of these tomorrow, about 110 k so three races. We're 23 races down in the sequence of 34, ninth event of the championship season. We talked a lot about Sandown this weekend and the wild nature of the racetrack. It will provide action this afternoon. It's going to take about 31 seconds to transit the pit lane. The rules require a compulsory stop to change a minimum of two wheels and tyres. Do you change the rears? Do you change the working side? Which in this case, with a anti-clockwise track constantly turning left, you might change the right-hand side. So there's the compulsory stop. If you want to be classified, you need to have done 75% of the race, 27 laps. Action spots, tons of them. It's been very lively all weekend at turns one, two, three and four. You've already seen a lot of evidence of what goes on at turn six. And it's pretty lively, by the way, down at turn nine, down in Ong Road, and in that right-hander at turn 11. It's a passing opportunity there. You get the theme here. Have a look at this carbon copy performances. A race winner three times last year, Shane Van Gisbergen. and it was an unbelievable performance, one of the all-time drives in the supercar caper. Now, let's talk about the considerations. I've spoken this weekend with Mark a lot in the commentary box about risk versus reward. You've got to balance that very carefully here because the risk is high, and sometimes because of that, the reward is pretty low around here. And particularly with the mud and the water and the garbage offline at the moment, you want to be pretty careful today if you're a brave adventurous lad out there. Now, we rate this place pretty high in terms of bumps because of all this stuff the displacement of the shock absorbers the pet is super shock more than a meter a second climbing over all the bumps here it's easy to break a car at this location and as the place has got older it's starting to hurt the tires more so we regard this as a high wear rate track at the moment tire management therefore you've got to be very careful and there's a couple of opportunities here do you undercut put some fresher tyres on, grab the other guy that you might be racing, or guys, or do you do what we saw Shane do recently where you've been very successful with good car pace to do the overcut. Safety car, I reckon the conditions out there today, despite the statistics telling us that it's low, fair chance you're going to see the BP Ultimate safety car. Weather, it's cold, my feet are freezing, it's saying 12, it's nothing like it at the moment, it's about 6 degrees. Shane Van Giersbergen starting this one from the outside of the front row. Didn't quite get the last corner right in the shootout, but it looks like you've got a pretty good car under you. Yeah, my car's meant um, pretty angry at myself for that, that era because uh, Will's been the fastest car. And I felt like we were getting better and better. And, um, yeah, qualifying's been our weakness, but Andrew's been doing a great job. So have the other engineers and just pissed that I was the one that let them down. But, uh, yeah, let's have a good race and looking forward to it. Haven't run on the Dunlop super soft tyre here at Sandown before, so it's a bit of an unknown as far as tyre degradation goes. So have you got any idea of what the tyre's going to be like here? I have no idea. And if anyone tells you they do, they're lying. So it's going to be interesting. We have no idea how long it's going to last, how, how many tyres we'll take at the pit stop. We're just going to wing it. So, yeah, hopefully I can look after them at the start, then push hard at the end. Thanks, Shane. Good luck. Cheers. I'm down with James Courtney. You just heard from Shane Van Gisbergen. His plan is to just wing it. Are you going for something similar today, James? Yes, pretty much what we're doing. So it's it's so uh, crazy down here in the turn one, mate. Every year there's uh, there's there's drama. So it's uh, 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Just try and keep our nose clean and start and then press on. But uh, the weather looks a little bit ominous that, that way as well. But it's uh, nice and sunshine at the moment, so hopefully we can get this race in before it rains. We saw up in two wheels in the Armour All Shootout. That was pretty cool. How would you go selling the uh, undercar signage for this race? Yeah, I think they whipped a couple of Snowy River Caravans uh, <laughs> stickers under there. It actually climbed up. It felt really high in the car. But when I saw it afterwards, I was a little disappointed with my effort. So uh, I might try and get up a bit higher in the race. Thanks for the entertainment today. Cheers. <laughs> Thomas Randall out of fifth on the grid this afternoon. You've got your fan club here with you today. Yeah, it's got uh, all the guys and girls back there um, pushing me along, so it's been great having them out across the weekend. And uh, we've got plenty more coming across uh, the weekend, the rest of uh, so tomorrow. So uh, it's been really cool, especially having the car in purple for the Peter Mac Cancer Foundation. So just great to reward the team as well with the top five in the shootout, and hopefully we can get down to turn one in a good spot. Congratulations on another great qualifying result. You did a brilliant job at Tail and Ben. What does it mean to be able to come here and back that up? Yeah, I think considering the circumstances, you know, it was obviously yeah, not the way we wanted to end what happened at the bend, but we had really good speed. I mean, we're on the front row and I feel like we were there for a reason. And to back it up, yeah, top five is really cool. So I've just got to try and have a really good race now. It'd be nice to get a top five or even better result for, for all the guys and girls uh, and for Castrol. So uh, we'll see what we can do. We've detailed what happened to you at Taylor Ben in that massive crash. It's been great to see you get back into the car this weekend and, and press on. How are you feeling? ahead of the race today. Yeah, brand new, ready to go. <laughs> You've been in the UK doing some driver training too. Just tell us about that. Yeah, I guess it, uh, they probably thought I needed it. No, look, uh, it's, it was good to see Rob Wilson. Uh, yeah, he's a world-renowned driver coach, sees a lot of the F1 guys, F2, F3, uh, World Endurance Championship drivers, IndyCar drivers, and uh, we, we had a schedule for probably the last couple of months, and uh, it was good to get back and see him. It's been a few years, and uh, yeah, I think it's all paying off. Have a great run this afternoon. Thank you, Jess. Cheers. All right, let's take a look at the keys to the track now, thanks to Ford. And then the run down the day, non-corner, really important because it's a great passing opportunity. Certainly is. That's the line four. Yes, they will. So there's going to be another lap after this one. How long can Skate hold him out? Down the inside goes Jason Richards. The run to turn 11 is one of the key passing opportunities here at Sandown, but Craig, ironically, you generally get it done on the outside. You do, Garth, especially at the end of the race. On that last lap, you're desperate to get around the outside, set you up the inside for the last corner, and then a short run to that checkered flag. Get it off the last corner, get to the checkered flag, get the job done. Out of the last corner now. His first ever... Hey, mate, you are one of the genuine talents in our field, but this year, I can't believe... I looked before, you haven't even had a podium. You're 14th in the championship. If you asked me at the start of the year, I would have said, no way, you'd be up in the top five. Is today maybe the day you've turned around? Because, wow, this looks so much stronger this weekend. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a disappointing year in ways, but uh, we've had good pace at certain events and then just been way too far off it. Uh, but hopefully turn it around. I always say when we get to talk to you, we must be doing all right. So uh, it's good to be up this end of the field. No, it is, mate. And can I just ask, I know you're not going to tell me exactly what, but what's changed this weekend? The car has been performing beautifully. Is it set up stuff you've changed? Are you doing something differently? Uh, it's just like we rolled out of the trailer really where I just thought the car was really good and just tweaked it. We haven't done much since you roll out of the trailer. And as we know in supercars, if you don't roll out on point, you're chasing your tail all weekend. So it's been a really good weekend. Hopefully we can do that for the rest of the year. But it's just about getting it right before you get here, really. We love seeing you up here, mate. It's where you belong. Best of luck. Chaz Mostert sitting here in position 13. As I look up in front of me, the sky doesn't look too inviting. Have you got any insight about what's going to happen? Um, yeah, Sky looks really inviting from sitting all the way back here in 13th. So, uh, but yeah, look, I, I think it's probably a little bit too far away to hit us, but I've been wrong plenty of times before. Adam, Adam DeBore's two little sons were just out here on the grid. They're apparently big fans of Chaz Mostert. You've got a couple extra fans cheering on this weekend. Well, those two boys don't really have a choice since their dad works on the car. So uh, I think secretly I'm probably their second favourite driver. I think uh, the few drivers in front of me today that they're probably favourite is up there. So uh, they're being uh, very nice to me and telling me that they're, they're their favourite, but I don't believe them. Good luck out there. Thank you. Penrite Oil Sandown Super Sprint. We've got 36 laps of sprint racing this afternoon. We're 25 kilometres to the southeast of the Melbourne CBD in suburban Springvale. 
owned by the Melbourne Racing Club. This is a horse racing complex. It opened in 1962 as a motor racing track and touring car and endurance racing here from 64 on and off since then. Some of the biggest names have played the game here. We've seen some magic from Brock, nine victories, Moffat, six victories of the active drivers out there at the moment. Shane Van Gisbergen has more than any and Mark Scaife, a picture of the track one more time. It's fast, it's furious, it's bumpy, it's got a lot of surface changes and it always provides action. It certainly does, Neil. Very good explanation of this layout. Only 3.1k anti-clockwise, but in terms of action areas, you can pretty much put all the corners down as areas that bite you. Easy to run off the road at the end of the front straight, at the end of the back straight, down to Dandenong Road, and down into the final complex. It's a great racetrack. A couple of interesting placements on our grid today when you look at what's unfolding out there. We've got a lot of people scattered throughout the field. We've got our regular 25 drivers. There are no wild cards in the field this weekend. So let's have a look at our starting grid where we see Will Davison again having done such an awesome job in Armour All qualifying throughout this championship season, starting alongside Shane Van Gisberg and Will Brown. Mark Larkham has already detailed his fine performance together with a guy that's been vying for wins, poles and the championship all year in Anton Di Pasquale. Thomas Randall, what a great story. What a great comeback after Tail and Ben and a previous winner alongside in Mark Winterbottom. James Courtney is next in the queue alongside Jack LeBrock out of seven and eight. Andre Heimgartner, well you can echo the same remarks that we made before about Thomas for Andre. What a great comeback. He's alongside Brock Feeney who's having his first main game run here this weekend. Scott Pye in 11th with Cam Waters in 12th. That's a long way further back than we think that uh, Chas Mostadan and Cam Waters would have been. Brody Kostecki, it's a pretty lively middle of the grid with Todd Hazelwood and Jake Kostecki in 15 and 16. In fact, the amount of drama that we've seen over the years with Mostert and Cam Waters, look out for the opening stanza of the first four or five corners. Bryce Fullwood down there has actually been quite fast through the course of the weekend and the, and the Brett Jones racing cars, when the track's been a little bit greasy and a little bit lacking in the grip land, They've actually been really fast. So Nick Perkett still having dramas. David Reynolds, can you believe that he's that far back? He got caught with the red flag at the end, and that is the worst qualified performance in his career at Sandown. James Golding was the man who brought the red flag out in qualifying, and James was bogged between turn one and turn two. Jack Smith got a penalty there as well in the SET logistics entry. That's not a good look. If no. You're in one of those cars out there at the moment because that's the light showers that have been just scattered and throughout the Melbourne suburban area. But particularly yesterday, last night it was quite heavy rain and today we've seen on and off. Certainly this morning it was quite wet and this afternoon we actually had a period of beautiful gorgeous blue sky and sunshine but then I walked outside before and it started raining again when the Dunlop Super 2 race was on but it's really chilly out there at the moment and when you see that action Richard Harris on screen down to the south which is the general area we're looking into the southwest where the wind is coming from at the moment and you see that grey sky buckle up yeah, exactly we say it all the time you just want to get through this without that inclement weather see what happens as we get set for what is going to be a very, very interesting run into turn one. Can Will Davison, who's been on pole position seven times, only had one win for the year. Can he convert this today? Can Van Gisbergen, after that performance from last year, can he go back to back in terms of wins? What happens to Mostert and Cam Waters down in 12th and 13th respectively? It's going to be wild. We love this place. You mentioned a little bit earlier in the broadcast, Mark, that 30 seconds. this is a very special location for the Davison family, and Will Davison's grandfather, Lex Davison, was a great motor racing champion, four times an Australian Grand Prix winner, including at Bathurst, and uh, he was killed very sadly here at Sandown, so very special significance for the young man on pole here, and his dad, Richard, very successful as a racer as well. He's done well, and, and Will himself has achieved a lot here at Sandown. So a big opportunity for him. If you cast your mind back to his victory earlier Green in the year, it was like in place. controversial circumstances because in a huge battle with Cam Waters and Cam caught the penalty and Will went on to get the victory. He wants to stitch one together on his terms today. Yeah, yeah absolutely, with, a, with merit, doesn't he? That's exactly what he'd be looking to do. There's no doubt about it. And a famous Melbourne family, as you point out, the Davisons. Story so far has had a Davison theme to it because when we opened the batting yesterday in the first practice session. 
It was uh, quite reasonable weather and out he went very, very quick. And in fact, he's been able to maintain that form. And if you actually look at the way things have unfolded through our championship season, they've had tremendous one-lap form. That was a little block on the copybook, though, because when he went out for the shootout, he crossed that chevron, the painted chevron lines on the racetrack, which you're not allowed to do based on the instructions in the driver's briefing now. The team have copped the five for it to slap on the wrist. There were no other cars on the racetrack. But he starts from the primary position this afternoon. That was a little heart-in-mouth moment that they could have done without and he'll be fully focused now on trying to make sure that he can get down to turn one cleanly he's on the dirty side of the road and fend off a very fast and very aggressive and very quick Shane Van Gisberg who's been doing a lot of winning so far this year on that topic he's had 14 of them and we've completed 23 races in the championship how's the ratio yeah how's the strike rate it's pretty gruesome yeah and if he puts together another three that's always a very difficult prospect in this Highly random business takes him to 17 if my math is going okay. Yep. And I think the greatest number of victories in a season is Scott McLaughlin, 18. So when we've got 34 races in total that constitute the Repco Championship season, then he's on target. If he continues this extraordinary form, he may be able to do something pretty special. Century Batteries, Tech Facts. Well, we rate this place in terms of braking as medium bumps plenty of them particularly over those curbs and the tire uh, wear is starting to hurt a little bit and we know with this Dunlop super soft tire mark we're sort of in no man's land for longer running here you can see a bit of the nature of the track that we want to bring to life here as well in terms of the average turning time a little over three and a half seconds where you load the car watch out for that crossover time one minute and 17 seconds the crossover from dry to wet it's only 240 meters from the front row of the grid to the apex of turn one i can guarantee it will be lively crompo this is going to be all about conversion shane van gisberg and as you said 14 wins from four pole positions will davison one win from seven pole positions can today be the day he breaks the nexus and starts to convert you want to talk about will davison off the pole position and yeah, we're Shane Van Gisbergen alongside row number two is Will Brown and Anton Di Pasquale. All right, last car's put in the box now. Both those guys on the front row of the grid looking for the last millimetre. Right on the green front flag, of the bay. Green flag. Van Gisbergen's won five of the last championship races. Three in a row here last year against the odds. He's off the front row. Can he get the job done alongside a fast starting Will Davison? And Davison converts beautifully off the line. Anton having a nibble here in fourth position, but a beautiful start by Will. How was the aggression of Van Gisbergen getting across to the inside? We spoke about it before. I think there's been contact there. No, they got through. Wow, well done to everybody there. I thought for sure there was going to be a, a car spinning between two and three. Well done. We'll have a look again when we do our replays, but that move by Van Gisbergen to the left was extraordinary. He's got margin up the back straight for the first time, Will Davison, and he's bolted. An aggressive move to cover down the inside by Van Gisbergen to make sure that he didn't lose any further ground to any of the other marauders around him. So he hangs on to that second spot to touch up down the bottom of turn nine, and Feeney goes round. He has been rotated. And there were, I think there was more than one other car involved in that push and shove. Yeah, there was plenty going on. That's a concertina into Dan and Arone into turn nine. More contact there at the final corner. Cam Waters being punched along, but how was that start by Will Davison? It was absolutely perfect. No wheel spin, drove it away, and was able to dominate that first corner easily. Winterbottom and Courtney now pretty wild. Had a big long hard look down the inside, Mark the bottom. Very difficult when you try to poke down the inside there. Too shallow, though, because it's dirty offline and it tightens up the shape of the corner so much and invariably the car on the outside starts to crush down. It makes life harder for you. Davison's got half a second and under investigation. No surprise that Race Control's looking at what happened at Turn 9 there where we saw Brock Feeney pointing in the wrong direction. That's been confirmed by those in Motorsport Australia Race Control. Replay of the start, and what a great conversion by Will Davison. 
600 plus netties nicely converted to the road. Not a lot of wheel spin. Bolts down. Can choose his race line. Here's the wider angle of it. And the car just sat down ideally. He found the perfect bite point, just the right amount of throttle percentage of the cover by Van Gisbergen over Brown. Aggressive and important because that protected one position. He would have lost it had he not done that. Here's the view. This is from Shane. Watch this. Hard left lock. Get down on the inside. Gets all the way to the line to emphatically show that he was not going to yield to Will Brown down there. An what? aggressive, authoritative move. Yep, absolutely perfect. And how much of the importance to get to the inside for Van Gisberger. And that's been, you do get caught down there. There was a lockup. There was two or three cars in front that locked up. That started the concertina. Who was it that actually bumped Feeney? I think it was Heingartner. Uh -huh. But there was plenty going on down there as we pick up on Thomas Randall sitting in fifth position at the moment. Turn nine, northern end of the racetrack, just alongside the Princess Highway at Danny Nong Road. We jump on board, look over the left shoulder of Thomas Randall as he snicks gears all the way down to the right hander here. Check out all the different surface variations, and that western setting sun makes it very difficult through the final driving infringement. Contact with 88. Sorry, I stepped on the first part of that, but I think it was. Yeah, well, that's driving infringement for Andre Heimgartner, but I think there might be more of the story because I. I thought that maybe Brody Kostecki was into the back, was into the back of Heimgartner. So we'll just have another look at that at some point. That's a 15 second time penalty. No. No. Andre, that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and that's going to effectively put him out of business this afternoon. Look at the congestion building up here. So Boston's got an all time queue behind him at the moment. They're all welded to each other's bumpers. So Mostert is sitting in 12th position at the moment. He just moved up one spot. Remember that both Chaz and Cam were buried in the field after a somewhat difficult qualifying. So Waters has cleared the pack slightly that he was in up in the 10th position. And Chaz has got this giant queue of cars sitting in there behind at the moment. It's an aggressive pack. Davison, Van Gisberg and Brown. The margin across the top three, 1.2 seconds. It's a half second margin, first to second at the moment. And then Anton Di Pasquale, he's got a little bit of comfort over Thomas Randall there, but have a go at that group of cars. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and some big moves. Brody Kostecki up six positions, so outstanding. A couple of laps there, and Percat up five. I think that's probably the two best in the field at the moment. And the only word Brad Jones Racing heard from their driver Andre Heimgartner was that he said everyone ahead of him just stopped down there at turn nine. He did the best that he could. Yeah, just got to get on with it at this point. Not much you can do. It happens down there almost without fail in every motor race, particularly on a cold tyre. Someone is going to end up pulling an unlucky draw down there, end up into the back of another. So things just settling down ever so slightly. Long way to go in this one now. So Will Davison's starting to ink out to almost one second. And we've seen a pattern like this where Shane finds a rhythm, doesn't take too much energy out of the tire, sits, stalks, and then pounces a little later. Remember, there's a compulsory pit stop to change a minimum of two of the Dunlop super soft tires. Track temp's cooling, shadows are lengthening. And the margins are lengthening slightly from first to second, just ever so slightly on that lap as well. Now, the fastest car in the field presently is Cam Waters. He's in 10th position. He's just done, one, done a 1 minute 8.6, and he's 6.3 seconds from the lead. So we're hearing that Brody Kostecki wasn't into the back of Andre. It was actually Andre over the inside kerb. So watch this. So you can just see right in the centre of screen there, Brock Feeney. The little inside kerb lock is the issue. That's where the wheel lock comes in. Brody's too far back. Andre's mistake and bang into the back of him. So that's a fair penalty when you do that like that. And both Reynolds and Piffer, by the way, have taken their compulsory stops and there's another view of what happened. So it's those little awkward curbs at turn eight that actually tripped him. That started the locking process. The problem is your eyes are like dinner plates when you get down there at turn nine and you've got this conflict where you don't want to have a high speed crash and you're trying to stop and you're trying not to lock a brake. And when you mix those three things together and clip the turn eight curb, it's curtains. Exactly. So the, the original shot that we had looked like Brody was very close to Andre, but he was actually just trying to avoid what was going to be a spinning car with Brock Feeney. So awkward moment there for Andre Heimgartner and probably 
his own mistake. It's not as bad on the racing line down there between turns one and two as it was earlier in the day. We jump over the left shoulder of James Courtney here. Turn four, he's tucked in behind his teammate Thomas Randall. Yeah, quite a bit of push, mate. So James is talking is about Randall? understeer. Sorry. Is that from the car ahead? If so, bring the front bar down and five. So what James is being asked, is that aerodynamic disturbance coming from the preceding car and Thomas Randall, or, or is it something inherent in the balance of the car? And the reason why he wants to know is they might be able to make a little tyre pressure tweak, for example, for the incoming tyres and just potentially shift the balance ever so slightly in the car. And that's the reason for that question. It's not that they care whether or not there's aero disturbance from the previous car. It's what's the impact on yours. Now, the interesting comment from Van Gisbergen before the start was that nobody knows what the super soft tyre is going to behave like in terms of degradation. And that's 100%, we haven't raced on that tyre. And for him, when he comes out and says that, and people talking about, you know, what's it going to be like after 10 or 15 laps? And he said, well, if anyone thinks they know, they're lying, which is 100%. I thought about diving into that topic in the Hino Hub, but I've been selling the Harbour Bridge so much this year on tyre deg and the way the tyres behave, I just thought I'd skip over it and wait to see what happens. <laughs> it's been hard we will, won't we? Yeah. So, hard. so that's the damage on the front of Andre's car that uh, has now dislodged the bonnet pin. So when he struck the back of the Brock Feeney car, it's actually busted the bonnet pin. You can see it flapping on the front left-hand corner of the car. How about the fastest laps? So Will Davison leading with an 8.7, he's the fastest, but that's the best he's been able to do. Way down, Cam Waters, as you said before, with an 8.64. Everybody between Davison on an 8.7 and Mostert on an 8.6 has basically been within one tenth of a second of each other. It's extraordinary. So any of those cars are fast enough to win this race. Go, 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 go. Rears for Scott Pye, new line entry. Tyler Everingham being announced this week to be driving in the Repco Bathurst 1000 with Scott. So they're taking their opportunity to try and get some undercut benefit early. They've got a pretty long stint now of 28 laps to go on those changed tyres. It's happening in Weatherland down there. I'm just looking, glimpsing out the combox window to the south to see whether or not, or not we can add water and add some spice. No, that's uh, a, a there's been a uh, pot at the end of that rainbow. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just thinking when you, you, you apply your mind with someone like a Richard Holway, the engineer for Scott Pye, who's had such success here with Holton Racing Team for such a long period of time, he's actually, I think now, made a really bold call. We don't know what the tyre's going to be like, but the undercut and getting him out of the traffic is going to give Scott Pye a real feel for what the tyre's like. And if you do it early enough, it doesn't upset the balance so much. So for Richard to make that call, this will be interesting to see how that benefits Scott Pye. And remember that they can sit there and take the time to fix that bonnet because of the 15 second penalty off the back of this. So uh, once that's all taped up and sorted, I'll get this thing on its way. But uh, he's about to have a shocking result. This five, feels like five minutes, four, not 15 seconds. Three, two, one, go, 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 go. That's going to drop him to the very back of the field. Davison still actually got that 0.8 margin. At one stage there, it looked like he was just starting to eke it out a little bit, but it's just compressed ever so slightly. Brown's still sitting about half a second behind. It's pretty much equal distance between the top four, isn't it, when you look at it? And then that little gap back to Thomas Randall, who's still got James. So that puts Andre a lap down. Yeah. in that process there as well. So that's awkward. And he's fitted into that gap in behind Anton Di Pasquale. Whoops. Waters down the inside here of Brody Kostecki, who ends up high and wide on the apron on the exit of turn one. So that brings Waters up now into eighth position. So he's up four spots. He's starting position, so nice job, Cam Waters. 
David Reynolds, who's in 22nd, has done the fastest lap of the race now with an 8.47. Yes, yeah, so I remember he came in early with Chris Piffer and took tyres and then has the benefit of an open track and that makes a huge difference. In fact, I've spoken a lot to Chaz Mostert about this and, you know, we, we talk sometimes about the pace that the leaders want to be. His feeling and theory on this, together with some of his engineering group, is that that we are not paying enough dividend to the fresh air that they're getting, that that's a huge part of performance, that they're out on their own, they're running their own race, they're looking out the tyres to their own satisfaction, and being the lead car clearly, in their view, gives you a substantial boost in performance and lap speed. Yeah. And you have to say it's, that's probably battle, isn't and, it? Yeah, so. Sorry, in the hot seat. With Brock Feeney in 19th position, so his best is a 1 minute 9.3. We saw him pointing in the wrong direction at turn 9. He's tucked in here behind Todd Hazelwood. My goodness. Garth Tan delivered a great line earlier in the day that said the racetrack's an option, and that looked a bit like that up there, didn't it? Everybody was trying to do everything but be on it. Yeah, exactly. But he got away with it. It was a nice save. Now, I might have the wrong read here, young Neil, but... Will Davison looks in control of this race. Yeah, I'll just keep watching that margin. It's back out yeah. at 0.94 of a second at this micro sector. So uh, he's certainly got a nice comfort going out there at the moment from our viewpoint. We're not seeing any evidence of brake locking. We're not seeing any wheel spin. In fact, if anything, Shane might be a tad vulnerable to Will Brown here. Maybe. Yeah. I've kind of I've bought that product on a couple of occasions and then regretted I had buyer's remorse because <laughs> I think oh maybe he's a bit vulnerable here no he's not here we go so we've got De Pasquale and Courtney for their compulsory stops a nice cooperation between the two Ford teams there where Anton was able to drive through the Tickford Bay and then James Courtney arrived in his own spot so what does this do for Deep Pasquale because he was very close to Will Brown before the stop. So you all have to go out and put some really good laps together with some clear track. Get an understanding of what that car balance is like with the fresh tyres on. Got a shocker in the heavy or wet Taylor Men in the last race, the very last time that we raced in South Australia. That had the effect of dropping in one spot in the championship. He went from second to third position. So he needs a good solid weekend this weekend out of Deep Pasquale. Randall back on screen here, sitting beautifully in fourth position. Remember, it was a front row start that went nowhere for him at Taylor Bend last time. So what a great way for him to come back, but what a tragedy to be able to get himself so far up this highly competitive grid for him to not be able to convert to Taylor Bend was a great frustration, and obviously it ended in pretty substantial tears. And normally when you're at or near the front, you invariably get a yield on the other side of it, so we didn't get the punchline, unfortunately. Cam Waters has been able to grab another spot to jump into fifth position. So Red Bull have been very good at reading the room and then either undercutting as required or running an overcut strategy of staying out longer depending on what's going on with traffic and the pace of their car and the degradation of the tyre. So I'm also just going to keep one eye a bit cross-eyed on Anton Di Pasquale in this process to see whether the undercut actually delivers anything. So they've come in pretty early now. He was racing with, well, Will Brown, yeah, next in the queue. So we'll see where he sits in that little squabble and whether this gives him any benefit. Yeah, so we'll get some numbers for you as this stint of the race unfolds, because at the moment, our, our numbers on corrected numbers is only 0.7 of a second between Anton Di Pasquale and Will Brown. Again, the pace of Will Davison looks very good. He's got 1.1 seconds on Shane Van Gisbergen now. The car looks like it's flowing really nicely. I mean, no evidence of a brake lock, no evidence of oversteer, no evidence of wheel spin. He's been able to drive the car with real precision and real flow. One of the things about this place is, although there's some fast pieces, the little slow pieces still require 
you to climb the curve, but to try to keep the mid-corner speed up and keep the momentum and the rhythm up. And what he's been able to do so far is show that. 1.2 seconds now, the gap to Van Giersbergen. And he's just squeezing it out ever so slightly, and uh, on our computer interrogation of what's going on out there at the moment, there's not a lot of tyre hurt. They're, they're actually showing to be quite hardy at the moment, consistent, not a lot of tyre degradation. Best lap of the race for Will Davison to underscore the point, 1 minute 8.7. His last lap, 1 minute 8.8 .8 equals no degradation. Yeah, exactly. It's a bad equation. <laughs> one ten. Yeah, so, well, it's a good equation because race drivers like tyre consistency. We like them to hurt a little bit more so that they have to work for it and it spices things up. And there's some spice out there at the moment in that little battle, isn't there, involving Hazelwood and Feeney. They're down in 16th and 17th. Tim Slade mixed up in a battle here also with Macaulay Jones. A whole bunch of cars here. Shout out to Lee Holdsworth, 500 supercar races strong today. And 900 races today for the Watkinshire Andretti United Group, formerly the Holden Racing Team in their various guises. And that is a pretty serious innings in the business of motorsport. So, uh, dainty foot cam here is Macaulay Jones, the drill pro entry. See him modulating the brake. So that is a variance of the brake pressure, just to help steer the car and obviously change the direction and also brake the car. When I say change direction, you actually get a brake direction effect with these cars. You can use it as a tool to help move the car around. Compulsory stop, done and dusted, Slade. As Tim Slade came in, have a look at who's the car controller, Mark Scape. It's Wally's story. We've spoken about the experience this man has in supercars. And look, he's straight back on the horse, right into car controlling world. <laughs> he's a great character. He's been in our industry for a long, long time. He's worked with Neil Crompton for many years. And it's great to have him back. He's a very funny guy, but he's a very, very bright man. He's been one of the most distinguished engineers in the industry for probably 40 years. I reckon Lynn will be pretty happy to get him out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Probably paid his airfare. Yeah. <laughs> That's what will be really going on. Yeah. I couldn't see. His, the good thing about him being a car controller is he can't see that he's lost his hair after all those years of working with you. The bad thing about being a motor racing widow is you're a motor racing widow. But the good thing about being a motor racing widow is you're a motor racing widow. <laughs> Front bar, this is a really critical pit stop happening here. We've seen Will Brown. He's had a horror run of the stop today. And here we go. I just wanted to see a stop here that was a little bit slower. These guys, yes, they need to do a four or a three second stop to stay in front of Anton Di Pasquale, but that's not the issue for them this year. They need to put the string together of four and five second stops, get it right and build on that. Here comes warm tyres versus cold tyres. There goes Di Pasquale past Will Brown. He's not able to get to Van Gisbergen, but it, that undercut has absolutely worked for Anton. Definitely closed the margin between where Anton was in the field relative to Will Davison and Shane Van Gisbergen and relative to where he is now. And this is the first time in a while that we've seen Red Bull react in the other direction here now. So they've, they're taking a bit of the strategy that we've seen others play, which is come in a little bit earlier and see whether or not you can get some benefit. Now they're reacting with Car 17 and Davison's now in. Race leader in. Thomas Randall is in behind. And they're forced to react based on Anton's pace. So Anton Di Pasquale did a 8.59 in the previous lap. And that's the reason that they've had to react. I'll give you some numbers on pit stops in a second, but some very nice ones that we've seen so far. So what's the rejoin? There's Shane in the background, Anton behind him, and here comes Will. So that margin has been maintained, but a lot of it's going to crush because as Will comes out of the pit lane, accelerating back to speed, Shane's already at it there. He'd be a good 250 kilometres an hour by the time he goes past the lane. Now have a look at this. Oh, that was awkward between Courtney and Randall. And in fact, James had to violently jump to the right to take evasive action. Oh, that could have been a big, big accident there on the main straight. Pye's going to get up the inside here. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thomas was loose in two and three. He was battling to try and give it a giddy up through there on a cold tyre. And that was enough for Pye to be able to muscle on by. So the best pit stop I've seen so far was 3.8 for car 17.
And Moss at now three and a half. That's the best one. Watch this one. So that that's a uh, shopping aisle moment, and both trolleys nearly ended up into each other. Yeah. From the same team. Yeah. <laughs> Margin between Van Gisbergen and Deep Pasquale is tantalising here, isn't it? That's pretty close. Control to all teams, control to all teams. Bad sportsmanship flag, car 55, careless driving. So that's Thomas Randall, and the gentleman on screen there is James Taylor, the race director for Motorsport Australia. He's running opposite in the tower just nearby. So Jack Smith, Jack LeBrock are both in the pit lane and about to depart. You can see them on the ramp. Yeah, so that was. Uh, an awkward moment, and it may not have been a deliberate attempt. It might have been which way are you going to go, Joe, because you're trying to get your own car mobile. You're trying to navigate based on looking in the rear view mirror to see what the other party's doing. So, But the problem is with all the moving around, nobody knows what is going on. That's right. So if you commit to one position, everybody else can fall into line. So that was an awkward moment. Brody's in. Stops it nicely on the marks. Good efficient stop there. Boys shaking hands. So uh, the best one I've seen definitely is, is Mostert. Will Davison was 3.8, so Mostert was a 3.5. Will Davison was a 3.8 round. There was actually a gun failure on the left rear tyre for Jack LeBrock, so he's dropped way, way, way down the order. Remember, he started inside the top 10. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a 10 second stop. So that's the worst one of the of the pack. I'll say you think about 10 seconds, not a lot of time, but it is in this business. Yeah. So you do a 10 second stop and you never nobody. So Pither also just having a bit of a moment there trying to figure out what to do as he rounded up Nick Perkett. This could be tricky. Nick's on a cold tire. You've got Bryce rounding him up and Tim Slade in this battle as well. Now Winterbottom's coming from second position, leaving Cam Waters in the lead from Lee Holdsworth, who'll move up into second position. They're running McCauley Jones a little longer. Here's the Irwin Pools entry. Jake Kostecki's in now as well, Mark. And uh, before the pit stops, we reported that it was roughly 1.2 seconds gap between Will Davison and Shane Van Gisbergen. That number now is 2.3 seconds. So a little bit of pit stop gain, but a little bit of car pace has just been able to link that gap out a little bit more again. There it is. Five and 97, exceeding track limits. Five and 97, James Courtney and Shane Van Gisbergen, exceeding track limits, bad sportsmanship flag. Uh, uh, dare I say it, I'm not 100% convinced that Shane's got the pace. That, I mean, it, it I'll calibrate that. He's at the front of the field and doing very well. But uh, where was... Sportsmanship flag for exceeding track limits. They just want me down there at the Andrew Edwards. Okay. So he must have been running it off the top of the hill here a couple of times. Yeah, straight lining. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So where we've seen these dominant performances with enough capacity and performance in the car to be able to make changes strategically, today it looks like he's fighting a bit harder for it. Waters from the lead. Go, go, go. Three that looked pretty handsome. So 3.8 was the time there for Waters, so that's amongst the best stops that we've seen in the race this afternoon. And Mostert on 3.5. So Waters comes out now just in front of Thomas Randall, and he dives to the inside. And uh, the two teammates make it looking a little bit awkward through one, but Waters hangs on. Nice job, a bit of speedway driving would have helped there. Because the cold rear tyre, he turned it in, you could see how much oversteer it had, and he was trying to gather it up without running into Thomas. So that would have been a bit of a heart stopper for Tim Edwards and Rod Nash and everybody at Tickford. So there's only one car in the field to stop now, and it's Lee Holdsworth. And then that will reveal Will Davis and in the lead of the race from here into the right-hander in the final complex. And he's got exactly three seconds over Shane Van Gisbergen, who's only half a second clear now of Anton Di Pasquale, and we've got 13, about to be 12 laps to go. And 
looks good, doesn't it? The car's flowing in really nicely. I mean, he's been a absolutely impeccable. The start was almost perfect. There's no wheel spin. But every time you look at the car, it's just flowing so nicely. It's got the momentum and the rhythm. It rides the kerb so well. It settles. We talk about the kerb usage, but when the car arrives back on the ground, it settles so quickly. You can see there that they've got it set up. The front of the car's up. The rear of the car's down. We call it the, the sort of speedboat dynamic of how it puts its power down. And it's got such great drive traction. It's been a dominant display this far. Clucker. And Scaife, you're looking at that Mustang out in front. We all love a Ford out in front. Can we get the shot back to the Mustang, please? Um, I think we remind everyone at home about that cool little stat we talked about yesterday that our V8 sleuth Aaron Noonan came up with. 37 Ford wins and 37 Holden wins in championship points history here. So, three races this weekend. Someone is going to leave this Sandown race this weekend and forever be the Ford or Holden champion of Sandown. Yeah, it's a cool stat, isn't it? 37 each. And as Neil's been talking about through the course of the weekend, this place built on the heritage of the Brock Moffat. Something here. And it's parked up. It, I, I, don't, I think it's stalled and you can't get it to restart. Do not push the car, let it go on its own. Do not push the car, go. Lee, all clear. Go, go, go. I don't know. I, I, you, you were yeah. in stat land and I was what, thinking, what's going on? They just sat there. Obviously, there's more to the story. We'll get the team in the pit lane to follow that one up for us. But that was ugly for Lee Holdsworth. Meantime, the fastest car on the track now is Brock Feeney. There are bonus points for a faster slap, five of them. So, one minute 8.4 is the time. And here's the battle at the moment for second position. Shane Van Gisbergen from Anton Di Pasquale. And Will Davis has actually opened that margin out now. 3.9 seconds, so he's put another second into it. Will Brown, who started third, currently sits in fourth. So I think part of the story with Brock Feeney, with his pace, he put three tyres on, Neil. So that would actually give you a yield around here in terms of the way the car brakes and how much stability you get from it. That's a big lock-up down there for Will Brown, but he was able to save that. Nicely done. Have a look at this moment. That was a bit of James Courtney action. Out and over the exit kerb. Got away with it. Hard on the car over the back of that kerb. It's so steep. Now, can Anton do something about Shane Van Gisbergen? There's nothing in it. And he's got to try to place himself on board with him now. Got to try to place himself close enough to get some sort of slipstream effect. Rihanna? Yeah, just had a quick chat to Brenton Grove here at Penrite Racing. The car, they just said it just flamed out. Actually, Dave Reynolds had the same sort of issue, but was able to get out of his pit box. Uh, they actually mentioned they were having uh, issues with this in practice early today, so it's something that's been plaguing them throughout the weekend. Thank you. Thanks for following that up. Sometimes when they're on the pit lane limiter and you've got the wrong amount of throttle, I don't like that in terms of the air-fuel ratio and the way the engines are mapped. And then when the cars are stationary, they have a what we call a flame-out, an inlet manifold flame-out. Turns the thing off. To car six, exceeding track limits. Car six now, Cam Waters exceeding track limits, bad sportsmanship flag. But once they've flamed out like that, sometimes they don't like restarting either. Because they've got a big gut full of fuel and they're not programmed to start under that condition. So obviously it happened to David Reynolds and he got going, but to Lee Holdsworth celebrating 500 races. What a great weekend it is for Lee. Debuted here. They dragged his Smith's trucks Commodore out earlier in the week and took a photo of the car that he was driving in those early days. This is pretty wild here. Chris Pether alongside forward. Forward's been able to get by here. He's certainly on the preferred side of the road at the top of the hill. And now Nick Perkat, who's trying to land there. We've seen some massive incidents up here. Now Pither is across the inside. He's been able to park back under. And got away with it. I thought that was going to be very awkward. Yeah, I think uh, a couple of heart rates up and down the pit lane went up then. Tim Slade's having a nibble on the outside here. You can actually make that 
work and we're about to see it happen because it gives you the inside running through the final corner and that was nicely done you don't often pass around the outside but it's the Damn. next part of it but look at all this Ooh. so two and then three wide Brock Feeney down the inside Jack LeBrock we've got Chris Pitha making it three wide Macaulay Jones having a bit of a look here as well and when they're weaving around and someone's on the dirty side of the road that's often when there's little errors that creep into the game Guys, Chris, Chris Pitha has a uh, deflating tyre at the moment, hence why he's dropping back, and they're actually setting up for him in the lane. They've already completed their compulsory pit stop, but unfortunately they're going to have to come in and change that one tyre. They're unsure if it was a sensor or if it was a slow deflating tyre, but that's why we're seeing Pitha unfortunately drop so back far through this pack right now. And the teams have got tyre pressure monitoring systems that enable them to understand that it's coming back via telemetry. So this is a vigorous battle at the moment. Slade, car three, sitting in 16th position. Then Feeney, then Jones, then LeBrock, then Smith, and then Pitha, as reported by Chad, has got that problem. What a great shot of Brock. Has a dive down the inside, or at least to think about it. And done. A couple of laps ago, Slay actually thought about having a look down the inside when they got down to turn nine. Eight laps ago, eight laps ago. And pulled out of it, which was wisdom. He's done a lot of supercar racing because most moves down the inside at turn nine end up with car damage, a spun car, or steering damage. Oh. <laughs> Tim out high wide and down the wrong side of the ramp at turn one. Now tries to go side by side with LeBrock here at two and three. This is like a battle for the world championship here. It's on, isn't it? They've got away with it. I thought there was going to be far bigger repercussions with some of the moves that have been put on, but they've got away with it so far. <laughs> Bunnings Trey power pass. And we'll have a look here at Brock Feeney coming down the inside of Tim Slade. This was a nice clean move. Tim gave him some space and he tucked it back in nicely. This is the on board view. Jumps out from behind the rear wing. Fresh air, uses some curb to get the job done, and then that gives him the cover when he ducks to the other side of the road through the left-hander, and done very nicely, and opened up some margin out the other side. A well played, Brock. Here's our race leader, it's five seconds. I think he's got enough pace in hand, where before, when we've gone, okay, bold prediction time, and then had to eat words because Van Gisbergen has had performance capacity in hand, I don't think he's got a response right now. I think you're right. 5.2 seconds that gap, and it's 0.8 from Van Gisbergen to De Pasquale. That's probably more where the race centre is now, in terms of whether Anton can do something about Shane. We'll give you some lap times as we get to the end of this lap. Interesting that Davison uh, and the way that the cars flow through the course of the whole event to have a 5.2 second lead is substantial so will davison did a 9-3 van gisbergen a 9-5 anton dick Squally a 9-7 so they have actually dropped off more now than what we originally reported still only effectively half a second or three quarters of a second but it is more of a drop-off later in the race than we were reporting earlier. We were also selling the dud concept of rain as well. No good? No, as well. No. <laughs> we keep seeing sunshine everywhere out there at the moment. So no, nothing has come of that. It's been a nice run this afternoon by Anton and that earlier pit stop and strategy that Ludo implemented with that car seems to have worked pretty well, hasn't it? He's been able to stalk the rear wing of Shane Van Gisbergen uh, after the stop sequence for much of it now, so he's been able to match the pace. It's a good battle going on behind them, because James Courtney is right there with Will Brown and Cam Waters. So, nice strategy also by Richard Holway with Scott Pye, because that's got him to seventh. This could be, uh, we'll give you a bit of an idea as to where everybody is. Davison leader, gap back to Van Gisbergen, gap to Di Pasquale, Gap to Will Brown. Then, as Mark pointed out, you've got James Courtney, Cam Waters, Scott Pye, Thomas Randall, Mark Winterbottom, and then some fresh air to Chaz Mostert and Brody Kostecki, and then a further margin back to David Reynolds. So, some people who took on the strategies here and did things slightly differently have got a yield out of it. So, remember that Reynolds was all the way down the bottom of the ladder at the start of this one, so he's crept up enormously to be on the fringe of the top ten. 
Yeah, 11 spots. Yeah. So big gain. And Golding the same, 12 spots. Big gain. Yeah. yeah, so, and an impressive run by Waters. So to come from 12th up to 6th position when you're a championship contender, and you would often think to yourself when you qualify outside the top 10, this is going to be pretty hard yards. Now he's having a good look down the inside of turn nine on James Courtney. And he probably needs James to be a bit cooperative here because he is in the hunt for the championship. Cam Waters, and he's rounded it up pretty nicely on the outside. So he made that reasonably easy for it. So that up seven Four spots now. Eight, Position number five, Cam Waters. Great drive. And he's got pace in hand at the moment, so he might be able to grab Will Brown if he can get a clean go at him. Yeah. I didn't think starting in 12th position that Cam Waters would get to fifth. So nice, really nice job. Well, the car was clearly out of position pace-wise in qualifying. But this has been a beautiful drive today. And this is the sweet one that I reckon that Will's been in search of in 2022. Great job in practice, great job in qualifying. We're seeing a great job in execution now in the race. And it's 6.2 seconds officially and a big group of people inside the Shelby Power Racing Team garage, including those in the strategy bunker. What a new contract does. <laughs> it's, a, it's worth a 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so both Anton Di Pasquale and Will Davison announced during the week by the Shelby Power Racing Team that they've had their contracts extended duration of which we do not know and that's pretty normal in the business but it's always a relief for a driver and there was a little bit of noise in the panic about whether Will was staying and whether there would be any movement in silly season but he's it'd be, it'd be a pretty cruel blow based on his qualifying performance and the quality of his racing for him to not have a drive with the team at the end of the season exactly Will Davison just did his fastest, his personal best lap on the last lap there with an 8.70. He's doing a gizzy. This is cool, this little battle going on here at the moment. Waters v Brown. And he needs to clear him pretty quickly because if he can't, he's going to be continually stalked by Courtney and Pye behind. And though he might get some cover from James, Scott Pye won't care. No, that's right. Absolutely. And nearly out of breath at the end of the back straight. In fact, earlier on, on good tyres with low fuel, we heard some cars. Will Davison, for example, in Quali, we heard it on the limiter up the back straight. You need the breeze to help you with that one sometimes. And he now, half fainted, didn't he? And he just did it again then. So the two little things that Waters is trying to employ is just that little move before the braking area. He tried to do it down to turn nine. He just did it down into turn 11. He just moves it over. Indicating that he might have a lunge. Uh, so Will Box, he moves it over. He's, oh, and he's going to give him a bump. They, ha they made contact then, didn't they? If they did. Yep. Yeah. If they didn't, it was very close. Well, well, the bit that's bad there is I reckon that Will then moved it back over in the braking area. And he was already committed, so Cam, well, that's why Cam's blowing up on the radio. Next lap, mate. Next lap. And Mark Winterbottom's having a big shot in the background at Thomas Randall as well, but our eyes are fully focused on what's going on for this little battle. Fourth and fifth is being disputed. In fact, Winterbottom has been able to clear Thomas Randall, moved up one spot to eighth in the Irwin Tools entry. So Cam's all over him, and Will's gone defensive. And when you go defensive, it costs you a little bit of time because you're not on the ideal racing line. And that is even further incentive now for Cam Waters. And he'll try and round him up. And he's tagged him. He's tagged him into the right-hander. They both got away with it, but only just. So it's an aggressive defence here from Brown. And it's an aggressive attack here from Waters. Sam Potter. Just said, think about the points he said. And then what he's saying is that he's moving it over in the braking area, which when, once you're committed and you're, you've got the momentum and inertia of the car and you're braking it as hard as you can, if someone moves it across in the braking area on you, there will be contact. So that's what he's blowing up about. On the last lap, oh, oh, this almost oh, runs oh. it out of the road on the exit of turn four. So it's getting a bit ragged at the back end of race number 24 of the Repco Supercars Championship. And at the moment, Will Davison is on target for an impressive victory. And we are yet to determine what happens for fourth and fifth into the final complex after a brilliant drive today.
advances it in second gear, lines it up to the chequered flag, and it's career victory number 21 for Will Davison at yeah. a very special yeah. location at Sandown. Oh, thanks, Rich. Thank you, guys. Look wow. at this battle here. Wow. Waters on the attack. Wow. Every yeah, which way. Switches to the inside. Tries to take the short line. And Brown hangs on. There'll be aggro after the race for those two guys. Fair recovery from where we started. Uh... Davison over Van Gisbergen. 8.4 seconds. Big number at the end. And Di Pasquale half a second behind Shane in third position. So the Shelby Power Racing Team taking positions one and three today. And Will Brown hanging on to the end, and I think your observation's right. I'm sure that there'll be a bit of friction there between Will and Cam at the end of that one. But a great race. What a famous family name. Melbourne, royalty with the Davison clan here. His grandfather, his father, his uncle. So many of the Davisons have competed at this venue. Such great heritage and tradition, and what a day for Will Davison to be able to get his second win of the year, but absolutely smashed everybody there today. Eight and a half seconds up the road. And immediately repaying the faith of the organization that's backed him and said, we want to keep you, you matter. Here's a contract, stay with us. And so he's come back straight out onto the racetrack and delivered with maximum points today. Fastest lap of the race, by the way, Brock Feeney, extra five bonus points for him, 14th position. Confirming our race results, Penrite Oil, Sandown Super Sprint, Will Davison home by pretty gigantic margin in the end, nearly eight and a half seconds over Shane Van Gisbergen. Tiny margin of about half a second to Anton Di Pasquale between Shane and Anton. Will Brown doing everything he could to hang on at the end by two tenths of a second over Cam Waters. James Courtney, the watching brief in position six. Scott Pye, nice run in the top ten. Mark Winterbottom was in the game as well. Thomas Randall comes home in ninth position and Chaz Mostert moved up slightly into tenth. Kostecki Reynolds, nice job for Davey to get up where he did. Golding Feeney, quickest lap of the race. Percat forward, Jones, Slade, LeBrock, Smith, Hazelwood, Kostecki, Heimgartner, a tough one because he copped the penalty after shoving Feeney off early in the game. And then Holdsworth and down the order there, Chris Pithu had a deflating tyre. The Pertec victory lane belongs to Will Davison and he rolls on in. And both the boys in the Dick Johnson racing team have done a nice job here today to be able to bring home a big bundle of points. Always handy for them in the team's championship. So Will uncouples everything. Radio, drink tube, cool suit if he's using it, and the belts. Great response from the gang in the grandstand. And Anton and Will embrace in a fine performance and Shane Van Gisbergen congratulates both the boys. So great sportsmanship between all three and uh, nice 100 point credit goes straight into the bank here for Will Davison and as Mark pointed out before it's the second victory of 2022. Gee that car was hooked up. It was hooked up from the very beginning in practice number one. It looks super solid in qualifying, delivered another armour or pole position to him. The start was a beauty. It was right out of the textbook. It sat down, did not wheel spin, bolted down to the first corner. In fact, Will was able to position the car where he wanted to by the time he got down there. And we wondered whether or not he'd be vulnerable if in fact there was more pace to come from Shane. It didn't happen. He is the victor and he is with Jess. He certainly is a welcome return to the Pertec victory lane for Will Davison, today's race winner. Congratulations, Will. Your first win here since 2009, where you took your very first win at Sandown. <laughs> just, I could see the relief on your face when you got out of the car. Just talk us through the emotions of today's victory. Just crossed the finish line first, <laughs> which is nice. But, uh, no, just, just a dream run. Um, yeah, dream run. Jeez, just, uh, just privileged to um, have a race like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing hard. Um, I'm feeling really good, but, you know, been around a while and just when you have race like that and a car like that, just huge shout out to, um, to Rich. I mean, just to everyone at Shell V Power Racing, the Ralph family on board. Uh, it's been a big week, so um, great way to, uh, you know, kick off the new era. But, uh, yeah, just car was a jet and um, just big, big thank you to, to, uh, to the team. Amazing. Where does that start rate? Because it was an absolute ripper today. <laughs> It was. I was sitting there and I'm like, don't overthink it. I'm like, I'm good off the line. And I'm like, just how many seconds have I had and how many pole positions haven't I converted? So there's no point overthinking it. Just um, keep it simple. And uh, yeah, launch, launch well. And then you know, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But um, yeah, car was really nice. Just uh, 
awesome that uh, hung onto its tyres like that and we could really control the speed. The scary thought may be for the rest of the field, is there actually more pace in this car because it was such a dominant performance today? Well, yeah, just towards the end, uh, you know, obviously I, I was watching the gap to Shane and I didn't know if safety car and, you know, trying to look after tyres and, you know, when I knew I was pretty safe with four to five to go, I, you know, I had some more speed in the car. So that's always a nice feeling, but we know day to day in this sport things change very quick. So we'll be definitely on our toes tonight and, and uh, have a good look at things tonight, but we'll enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy it. So big hello to everyone at home, all my friends, family, supporters. Uh, mega. Go and celebrate. Congratulations. Thanks. Cheers. Bill Davison with his 21st career victory. We'll move over to Shane Van Gisbergen, who did another brilliant job here today. His 20th podium for the season. Cool. Talk to us about the race. How did, was it from your point of view? Yeah, I, I tried hard, but Will was very fast and I just couldn't quite hang with him. And then after the stop, he was gone. But I gave it everything, but um, we weren't quite good enough today. Is there a bit more pace to extract from this car for tomorrow? Oh, I hope so, because he's too quick. But um, yeah, we'll work at it. Mainly re-attraction, he was very good. So, And maybe I went a bit too hard on that first stint as well. But anyway, it was... Uh, pretty well it was a boring race but still a, a good one and a tight one and um yeah hopefully we can put on a show better show tomorrow for everyone congratulations thank you we'll jump over and have a chat with anton di pasquale on the podium for the very first time here at sandown couldn't quite catch shane in the air then but the car looked pretty fast out there today yeah it's all pretty good um we pitted a bit early to get the undercut on will which uh, worked out and uh, on the podium, so it's all good. Obviously awesome for Will to get the win. Uh, both cars on the podium, it's a, it's a good day. It's been such a big week for the team, hasn't it? With all the announcements, signing on for a further tenure here with the team, but also to welcome uh, the Ralph family into the ownership structure. Just what does it mean to have a result like this, to have both cars on the podium here today? Yeah, it's obviously good on the back of all that. Um, you've been in the news all week, so to get a couple podiums to start is always good. Um, but yeah, that's what we're always aiming for. So hopefully we can uh, be hit there, thereabouts again tomorrow. Um, go a little bit quicker and try and catch these two. Congratulations. Cheers, thanks. Back into the pit garages and Cam Waters, fantastic recovery. 12th up to 5th today. Good gain of 7 spots. You're feeling about banking some good solid points in that one? Um, yeah, it was uh, pretty speedy then. The car was really good on its tyres and um, yeah, kept going forward. Um, yeah, happy with 5th. Just need to you know, qualify a little bit better tomorrow those last few laps can you tell us how that all played out against Will Brown um yeah I just kept having good runs and he'd block and then I would go you know where he wasn't and then he tried to run me out of road um in all the break zones so he nearly ran off the one once but um you know he was hanging on for everything that he had um I would have liked a little bit more room from him but it was all right it was cool racing with him and um that's what we get paid to do we heard your energy, uh, your engineer say, think about the points in that scenario. You've just dropped 10 points back behind Anton in the championship. How tight is it in these, uh, these spots, second through fourth in the title fight right now? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I probably would have taken uh, Will out then. But, um, yeah, I thought it'd probably be smarter to finish, get the points. And, um, you know, there's nothing in it with the championship at the moment from, uh, you know, second to, you know, fourth or fifth. So, um, yeah, we'll be all right. Well done, mate. Thanks. Dave Reynolds, you got out of the car, big smile on your face, up 12 positions. That's an awesome effort. Yeah, it's not a bad job. We started, I don't know, in the 20s. You don't count the last number in the 20s, but my, my car was pretty good. The unfortunate part was I didn't have any lock lights or shift lights, so, you know, as a driver, you really need those tools to drive around, and so it's all, all considered it was a really good job. My car's good. The boys did a good job. Yeah, Penrod's good. Lee Holdsworth had an issue leaving his pit. Did you have a similar issue, but were able to get going? What's the, what's happening there? Uh, yeah, Lee's stalled when he came into the pits, and mine flamed out as well. So, um, yeah, mine just got going, and his took like 10, 15 seconds. But I think mine, I think I made it. Like, I beat the pit stop, and that's all you got to do. So, yeah, we need to look at that and see what happens, because that could ruin your day. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Well done. No worries. Thank you. This is what it means in championship land now. So we're 24 races down in 34 for 2022 for the Repco Supercars Championship. And you can see the margin, more than 400 points, Shane, to Anton. But Anton moved up one spot from third to second. Bit of movement further down the order as well because James Courtney came up a couple of spots by virtue of his fine performance there into sixth position. And Heimgartner, who had a tough one, finished in 23rd position. He actually dropped a spot back down to the bottom of the top 10. There was a bit of other movement just outside the top 10 as well. We saw Tim Slade just getting punched slightly out. But uh, he's dropped into 11th position and will live to fight another day. So great performance by Shane Van Gisbergen. So... He's continued to look pretty solid when it comes to 
his championship chase and he's got it out now to 400 plus points. Let's go and enjoy this podium. This is going to be a very special one for Will Davison. It's time for the podium for race 24, the Repco Supercast Championship at the Penride Oil Sandown Super Sprint. In third place for Shell V Power Racing is Anton Di Pasquale. In second place for Red Bull Ampol Racing, it's Shane Van Gisbergen. From today's winning team, it's Ron Young. And how about this result at Davison on the podium? Will Davison, first place here today. Presenting today's third place reef and trophy from Penride is Lucas Patella and from Kenworth is Marion Decker. Presenting today's second place trophy and reef from Penride is Harry Diamond and Toby Diamond. <laughs> Presenting today's team's trophy from Kenworth is Marion Decker. And presenting our first place reef and trophy to our winner from Penrite is Jaya Phillips and Toby Diamond. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's your race 24 Penrite Oil Sand Down Super Sprint Podium. It's time for the celebrations. Well done to the Shell V Power Racing team. Big result today. Two of their boys up on the podium and a nice fistful of points in the team's championship. And well done Shane Van Gisbergen who just continues to march along in the points battle and he's opened it up now to 401 points the margin. It's actually the first time since 1989 according to Aaron Noonan in a championship race here at Sandown that DJR have had a couple of cars on the podium so been a long time between drinks and as you heard in the interview before it's been a very special week for them with a little change in the ownership structure with that team and also the re-signing of the drivers. Boost Mobile highlights now. What a gorgeous start it was for Will Davis and just dropped the clutch. Next to no wheel spin, bolted, just sat down in the rear and off it went. He had a margin in hand, placed the car where he wanted to at turn one. And it was a smart play by Van Gisbergen to cover Will Brown into turn one and that protected him. That was an awkward moment, unfortunately, for Andre Heimgartner. He's gone straight into the back of Brock Feeney early in the game at turn nine and turned him around. We thought there might have been more to the story, but it was actually the lockup that happened a little earlier at turn eight. Now, there were a couple of awkward rejoin moments. This was one of them where we thought for a moment that it might have been a gigantic moment for Thomas Randall and James Courtney. There was a little bit of confusion just driving the car off the rear view mirror. This was a wild battle. It wasn't for the podium, but it was for the next in the queue for position four. And Cam Waters had a ton of pace. He came from outside the top 10 in this race to be continually pestering Will Brown, who would not yield. And in the end, Will was able to get home in fourth position. Cam stayed home in five. He got some important points, though. But it was a gorgeous drive, as I said before, by Will Davison. He looked strong in practice when they dropped it on the road. Strong in qualifying. Converts to a race win today. He's second of 2022.